Today, I'm going to be bringing you guys my updated guide for archer equipment in Rise of Kingdoms. I'm going to be telling you guys what the best pieces of archer equipment are in the game, and we're going to be going over the order with which you should be upgrading this equipment, because a little bit has changed since I previously made a video covering the best equipment in the game where I talked about archer gear. So this video is going to cover everything with the most up-to-date information. If you appreciate that, drop a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel a ton. And first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Now, in a previous video we covered infantry gear and I asked you guys in the comment section which troop type do you want me to do next and archers came out ahead and I think the reason for that is because a lot of people have questions about whether it's better to get the six piece dragon's breath set because it does give you bonus skill damage and archer health or if it's better to get the kvk pieces or should we be factoring in some of the leadership pieces into the archer build and this video is going to go in depth and answer all of those questions questions because the answer's not as clear cut as you might think honestly archers feel like the most nuanced troop type in the game there's just so much that you can do with them and tweak them for certain scenarios now in this video we're mainly going to be covering open field fighting but I'm sure you could probably use some of the information in this video to extrapolate to your rally and garrison performance this video also took me way more time than my infantry video because I actually ran over 8500 turns of damage calculations using the most up-to-date formulas and we're gonna cover all that later in the video but first we've got to start somewhere and the most important part when it comes to starting your gear set in rise of kingdoms is make sure that there's at least something in each slot for your six primary gear slots okay we'll talk about accessories later in the video but at the start of the game just get something in those initial slots and this is going to be the best place to start now in my previous video where we covered infantry gear some of you asked me what program am I using to like set up the gear and have it show the different buffs and everything like that this is just the rock battle simulator I'm gonna have a link to it in the description below because we're also gonna talk a lot about the rock battle simulator later in the video so make sure you stay tuned for that but this is where you're gonna start with your archer gear the blue weapon chest and leg pieces combined with the green helmet and the leather gloves as well as the gray boots you're gonna have dozens of pairs of these boots laying around okay in total this set's gonna get you 27 percent defense and 11 and a half percent health which is a really nice distribution especially for open field fighting now of course the first piece that you're going to upgrade here is going to be those boots these gray boots just are not going to cut it so the sooner you can upgrade to the flame treads the better especially with that archer talent it's going to get you seven and a half percent archer health which is a massive bump to your health percentage here from there the upgrade path for archers is actually super straightforward and that is you're going to get the four piece revival set archers are the only troop type in the game that actually have a set bonus on a purple epic set of gear which is really nice their initial stats are a little bit lower than the other troop types but once you actually get the talent and you get those set bonuses they do actually outperform the other troop types which is really really interesting the weapon here is not part of a set but you will eventually get the golden age as the weapon don't ask me why archers have a sword as their weapon it just is what it is but this is what you're going to be aiming for a full set of purple gear with every slot being revival except for the weapon and the boots this is going to get you 40 percent defense 19 percent attack and seven and a half percent health so you traded off a little bit of health but you got way more defense and way more attack and so overall this is just an, an overall improvement for every single slot which is really really nice from here things are going to get a little bit controversial okay and don't worry I'm going to explain all of the nuance for the different sets that you could be building for end game for archers but please Please hear me out before you leave a comment down below once you have your full set of purple gear all of it is talented the first piece that you probably want to upgrade is the chest piece the reason for that is because the revival piece gives you a bunch of attack and the legendary dragon's breath set piece chest gives you a bunch of health and that's definitely a trade-off that you'd be willing to make however there is one thing that you'll note here and that is that you've also lost the four piece set bonus for the revival set and so when you do make that chest replacement you probably also want to replace something else that way you can at least get the two piece set bonus for the dragon's breath set right and the piece that you probably want to replace and this is definitely going to be a little bit controversial but I promise you I will explain all of the nuance in the video so please don't write a comment yet but 
most likely you want to replace the boots with the dragon's breath boots okay now on paper the trade-off of seven and a half percent health from the flame treads with the talent to the seven and a half percent defense on the dragon's breath boots doesn't seem like a great trade-off and that's because it's not and as soon as you do that upgrade it may feel like a side grade or a slight downgrade but the truth is that as you build up your archer gear down the line with iconic upgrades and with special talents the dragon's breath boots do outperform in the long run so you're playing the long game when you're making these investments and also you now can put an iconic crystal in the chest and the boots obviously the boots are the priority for the iconic crystal and now you've got a two-piece set bonus which gives you three percent extra attack for your archers at this point you probably want to replace another revival piece because you i mean there's no such thing as a three piece set bonus so why, why not just make that replacement the route that you take next is going to depend on if you have access to the kvk blueprints or not but eventually you will want to replace the helmet with the ancestral mask of night and the weapon will be replaced with the hydra's blast replacing the golden age with the hydra's blast is just a straight up upgrade you're just getting more defense which is really nice the revival helmet for the ancestral mask is trading defense for attack but you're just getting way more attack here and so that's a trade-off worth making and now you have a two-piece revival set a two-piece dragon's breath set and two of the kvk pieces you can now also put more iconic crystals into your set and that leaves you with 27 percent attack 42 and a half percent defense and 11 percent health from here you will likely look towards replacing your revival set legs with the glorious goddess leg pieces this is actually leadership gear and we're going to talk about this in just a second but this gives you universal troop health and also two percent march speed for archers which is actually really nice and archers are probably the slowest troop type in the game right now if you build your infantry gear properly you're going to be cruising okay but archers are really struggling right now and that is all Zhuge Liang's fault I'll talk about that later but it turns out that the glorious goddess leg piece is actually better than the dragon's breath leg piece because the dragon's breath tacits gives you more attack and actually you would find that the health is a little Little bit more valuable than the archer attack but not by as much as you think and i promise we'll, well i'm gonna answer all these questions later in the video but with that out of the way you can now put another iconic crystal here and then you're going to replace the gloves with the glorious goddess gloves which is going to get you your final iconic piece and here we have a 222 setup although it is not necessarily the same 222 setup that a lot of people like to talk about when they talk about archers a lot of times people talk about using the dragon's breath gloves and the glorious goddess boots and the reason that people go that route is because the glorious goddess boots also give you health but it actually doesn't necessarily translate to performing better in the open field and i'm going to talk about that in just a second but please remember this video is made for open field fighting now when it comes to accessories for archers you're pretty much always going to use the same accessories and that's going to be the horn and the ring and the reason for this is because archers are all built around aoe skill damage i mean if you look at Yugi Leong, you look at herman prime you look at ysg you look at ashurbanipal you look at nebu you look at the, the all all their kits are basically built around aoe skill damage and so the horn is going to get you to pop those skills more often and the ring is just going to boost all damage and so that's really nice and that is pretty much it now if you build your archer gear a long time ago you might actually have a four piece dragon's breath set with the two kvk pieces and so your question might be is it worth getting rid of these two pieces or even is it worth getting rid of these two pieces for the leadership set now or is it worth replacing the two dragon's breath pieces for the helmet and the weapon is it worth replacing them and upgrading them to the kvk pieces and i'm going to answer those questions now but the short answer is probably not and this is where things get really controversial and this is the part of the video where we're going to go over literally spreadsheets and data and like i said earlier in the video i ran over 8,500 battle turns through the rock battle simulator if you guys don't know about the rock battle simulator it's made by a guy named speco and he basically took the best possible damage formula for rise of kingdoms that we've known in the community for years and he's actually improved it over time he's improved the all damage formula he's improved the skill damage formula he's improved pretty much every formula that we as a community have known since the wicked gaming days has been fine-tuned by speco to be even more accurate in the simulator than it ever has been before now math does scare a lot of people and a lot of people like to turn their brain off and say if it doesn't if it's not from the real game it doesn't count and that's because math is hard and people don't really understand how you could come to a conclusion through math and not from trial and error so i'm gonna link down below the patreon to the rock battle simulator of course i'm not sponsored 
sponsored by them but i'm also going to link down below this spreadsheet where speco goes through every single formula that he uses he goes through the pieces that he's not sure about he talks about all damage versus damage reduction skill damage damage factor troop counter advantage like archers versus infantry for example he goes through everything in the spreadsheet he is 100 transparent so if you question his math look at the spreadsheet down below and honestly if you think he's wrong about anything he probably would love to hear from you but you better know what you're talking about okay with that disclaimer out of the way let's go over some of the things that I tested and a lot of these tests I did a one versus many test against a test dummy to measure sev wounds and also total damage and that's what you can see here and in this test I did no iconics for anything and and I don't think anything had a special talent either and the reason that I did this is because honestly a lot of people don't have special talents on all their legendary gear and so I was just curious to see what would come out ahead and as you can see here the two kvk pieces and the four piece dragon's breath set actually came out ahead in first place and you might be saying Omniarch well didn't you just didn't you just say to do a two 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 setup and yes I did and we will explain later why I still think that is the best option to go with but here you can see the damage per second from each of the different marches here we have the kvk pieces plus the four piece dragon's breath set here we have the kvk pieces with the leadership boots and legs plus the two piece dragon's breath set here we have the six piece dragon's breath set here we have the two kvk pieces the leadership gloves and legs and the two piece dragon's breath set here we have just the leadership gloves and legs and the four piece dragon's breath set and finally we have the leadership boots and legs and the four piece dragon's breath set and you can see the damage per second for each of these and again in the simulator what this was doing was having Zhuge Liang with Herman that's very important by the way and we'll talk about that in a second but Zhuge Liang with Herman versus a generic archer test dummy with four other nearby armies attacking the Zhuge Liang Herman and that's important because that means the total damage is going to be through the roof and the reason for that is because this implies and the simulator calculates AOE damage okay so this is taking into account that Zhuge Liang is always hitting five targets and Herman Prime is always hitting three targets and this is not realistic right this is a best case scenario but if I did a 1v1 test the comments would be filled with people saying well you're not taking into account the AOE damage from Zhuge basically I'm not gonna win e either way someone's gonna be mad on the comments regardless someone's gonna be like well you, you tested it with AOE and that's just you're not always gonna hit five targets and this is why spreadsheets and math videos are like really a lot of people appreciate them but also like those room temperature IQ individuals always like to uh always like to flood the comments so anyway you see the damage per second the total damage dealt over the six minutes that I ran these tests you see the sev wounds that the Zhuge Liang Herman took versus the sev wounds inflicted here you can see the trade ratio and again the ratio here is insane because you're considering always hitting max targets with your AoE here you can see the percent change over just the six piece dragon breath set and that's important to know that the rest of this video the percent change here will always be related to the dragon's breath set okay I use the dragon's breath breath set as a baseline because it's easy it's just a six piece set and then here we also we we look at the total stats for that army with that set of gear and then I did the total amount of stats this is just literally a sum of these columns and then we have a ratio of the defense and health and that's a little bit important although it's not as important as I thought it would be in this test so we'll talk about that in a little bit but again with sort of just generic legendary gear the two kvk pieces and the four piece set came out ahead next we did with iconics for the equipment now it's also worth noting that for these two sets of tests the no I no equipment iconic tests and this next set we're going to go over I use the ring and horn and that's important but we'll talk about that in a second so just know that I use the ring and horn here because that's usually what people use and I wanted it to be as accurate as possible but for the final two tests I did actually have to remove them as you can see here because they were just throwing off the results way too much and I'll explain that in a moment but for the second test results we did with iconics and talents on everything except for the ring and horn and that brought us to obviously more DPS pretty much across the board less sev wounds taken more sev wounds inflicted as you'd expect because we literally just have more stats and the purpose of this test was to see does anything change when you inflate the stats even more meaning more attack and a bigger disparity between defense and health and the results definitely did change but the outcome of the number one spot did not the two kvk pieces and the four piece dragon's breath set did come out ahead about 3.6 percent better than the six piece set here which came in fifth place out of six which is not great although it is worth noting that the leadership boots and legs with the four piece dragon's breath set 
didn't really perform like better at all honestly like this is pretty much even that's why I put it in blue because it's almost the same there you'll see that you took a lot less sub wounds but you dealt a lot less sub wounds so that's why the ratio is off but it's clear to see that using the two kvk pieces at least definitely improves your March you can see that here as well so kind of a no-brainer there next I really want to hone in on these final two tests here we did a no accessories test with full kvk tech and full talents on all pieces also full iconics on all pieces and then we did a 1v1 test also no accessory full talents full tech full iconic all that stuff looking at the 1v5 again this is a best case scenario you're hitting all your targets with aoe forever this shows that the kvk pieces and the four piece dragon's breath set does win again with the best trade ratio now again I, I don't know if I made this clear so far but I'm ranking this based on your trade ratio okay not DPS not damage dealt not sev wounds taken versus inflict it's literally the ratio the trade okay that's what most people care about the best trade possible okay and here we can see the kvk pieces with the four piece dragon's breath set wins again second place was the six piece dragon's breath set and so at this point I was curious right and that's why I did the 1v1 testing because I was like well wait a minute why does the why does the two kvk pieces with the dragon's breath set why does that keep winning and I'll answer that question in a minute especially because I literally just told you not to do that although I'll also explain why it doesn't really matter that much in a minute but the final test that I did here was the 1v1 test and here we were assuming that we were not hitting anything with AoE at all we were just hitting a single test dummy target and that's why you could see the damage went way down okay I mean the damage is way way lower the DPS is way 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 lower and here you can see the first place winner was actually the two kvk pieces leadership gloves and legs and the two dragon's breath pieces second place was actually leadership gloves and legs and the four piece dragon's breath set and then third place was the kvk leadership boots and legs and the two piece dragon's breath set and so let's let's talk about this data right let's talk about some of the conclusions that i made here because you might be thinking well okay out of the four tests that you did the two kvk pieces with the four piece dragon's breath set actually won and that's true and that's because if we look through the data that set will always have the highest attack out of the entire testing range right and if we're assuming a world where we're always hitting maximum aoe targets then we're going to be milking that attack for its highest possible value whereas we're not getting the most possible value out of our defense and health because in the test dummy scenario you're being hit but it's by generic siege and it's also by a generic test dummy the test dummy does do uh, skill damage and things like that you can check the battle simulator down below if you're curious about how that works he explains it in the discord but basically in the scenarios where you're always hitting max aoe then of course it's logical that the set with the highest attack is probably just going to be dealing so much more damage that it's always going to skew the ratio in favor of that set and so that's why I wanted to do the test with just the 1v1 so we can draw some conclusions about what the actual ratio from attack defense and health are and the implications that they have in the in the actual battles in the real world and what we can take away from that okay and that's why ironically the 1v1 test was probably the most valuable test that I did here even though it's kind of the least probable scenario like you're never gonna 1v1 out in the real world right but it does tell you the best relationship between the different stats okay so let's go over the conclusions that we found through this testing and in first place I put the two kvk pieces with the leadership gloves and legs and the two piece dragon's breath set that would be the boots in the chest and the reason that I did this is because as you can see here this set has the best balance of offensive and defensive stats it does have less health than the commonly referred to leadership boots and legs as you can see here that actually has eight percent more health but you have to look at what the trade-off is and the trade-off is you know look the leadership boots and legs have 10 percent more attack and they have eight percent more health but the gloves and legs combo has 18 percent more defense so the outcome of that change in stat distribution is going to be well the set with the leadership boots and legs is actually going to deal more damage you'll see here that the dps is actually higher from the leadership boots and legs set but you're actually going to take more sev wounds and again this might not be intuitive because again you're looking and you're saying well you actually have more you have more health here you have more attack here so you're going to be reducing the enemy's troops faster with your skill shots and everything like that but the difference really is 18% defense is more tanky than 8% health. It really is just that simple. I would rather have 18% defense than 8% health. It just, that's what it comes down to. And the data supports that you will be more tanky 
with the leadership gloves and legs while still maintaining a decent amount of attack whereas if you look at you know the kvk pieces with the four piece dragon's breath set this has way more attack but you're losing defense and health to get there and that's just not necessarily worth the trade-off but that set is worth talking about and i will in just a second but in second place we actually have the obviously leadership boots and legs with the kvk pieces and the two beast dragon's breath set and again the conclusion that we can come to here is that this set with the leadership boots and legs will deal about two and a half percent more sev wounds to the targets but will take about three and a half percent more sev wounds as well compared to the leadership gloves and legs combo so that makes the leadership boots and legs build slightly more aggressive of a build than the leadership gloves and legs because again you're slightly less tanky but you're dealing slightly more damage okay now to me that trade-off is not necessarily worth it depending on the scenario that you find yourself in in kvk if you can manage that march really well if you can not get caught in the open field there's a good chance that having the two-piece boots and legs leadership set is going to outperform the gloves and legs again if you can manage that march really well you're hitting a lot of your targets with your aoe but in general the better balance is going to be the leadership gloves and legs with the kvk pieces and dragon's breath now in third place i think you guys probably have realized this already but third place is actually just the two kvk pieces and the four piece dragon's breath set now what is this build good for well it's going to deal about six percent more sev wounds than the leadership gloves and legs set but you're going to take about eight and a half percent more sev wounds as well and so here you can see the disparity is actually growing which is why you see the ratio grows pretty dramatically between these three builds here now this set lands itself in third place because it is well it's the set that will deal the most damage just straight up you will deal the most damage with this configuration like it just is what it is and that's only going to be amplified by the fact that you're going to be hitting multiple targets with your aoe that's where the bonus to attack comes in and also one of the reasons why a lot of people like to say that archers like attack more than anything and it's because you're just going to be dealing more aoe damage and that's like what they're built for so like you might as well like you could stack it there and you could really pop off but you will get punished if you do get swarmed and so this set is in third place it is the most aggressive of the builds and probably if you're in a position where like your alliance really owns the field you're really controlling the battle you have way more armies in the field than the enemy this set will probably perform better than anything else because you're less likely to be targeted there's going to be fewer enemies popping their aoe so you're going to be getting hit by less aoe in general and you're going to be able to just pop off as much damage as possible now if you overwhelm the enemy to a point where like you're not going to be hitting that many targets because they're just running away and you're not getting the value out of your aoe there's a little bit of diminishing return there but there is a world where i can see this set still being really valuable in the open field for those more aggressive plays where you can control the march the best now you might be saying omniarch well you kind of skipped over the leadership gloves legs and the four piece dragon's breath set why would you do that well that i'm not saying that this set is bad here but it's it's kind of like if you're going to go for this you might as well just go for for this one here right it's just literally a better version of that set and in all the other tests that we did the kvk pieces outperformed in, in general right so just as a rule of thumb i feel like it it just makes the most sense to include the two kvk pieces in your build for archers okay so now that i've sort of talked about the three best end game sets for archers and i've ranked them first second and third and we've given the different scenarios that you would prefer to use all three of them let's go over a couple of more nuances when it comes to the testing that we've done in this video the first thing is that all of this testing was done with Yuliang Herman because that is currently the single best archer march in the game and if you're watching this that's probably the archer pair that you're either using right now or will be using once you get your hands on it because it's just the best performing one and the reason that that's important is because Yuliang Herman has a lot of stats in particular Yuliang has 30 percent archer health okay and health is the most valuable stat and most likely the outcome of this testing would change dramatically if Zhuge Liang fell out of the meta in favor of a new commander that does not have as much health right because health is so premium that in a world where let's say a new commander comes out just like Zhuge Liang let's say it's a five target 2250 and he's just got like 30 percent attack 30 percent defense 50 percent skill damage like let's just say his kit is just Zhuge Liang but better but he loses that health right 
in that world i can see a world where the two-piece leadership set of boots and legs would actually then become the best in slot set for archers because that health is so premium and because those two different leadership sets that we talked about either the legs and gloves or legs and boots they performed so close that i think losing 30 percent health on the commander would shift the results in favor of the boots and legs so if you want to you know future proof your account and and think like well maybe maybe in the future we won't use a commander with 30 percent health well then maybe you go for the boots and legs because it performs almost as good anyway and this is why there's so much nuance to archers right in order to actually understand the best set you have to know what commanders you're using right and that comes down to like the best armaments and everything in the game but especially it's true for archers and so if you ask somebody what the best archer set in the game is and they don't immediately say what commanders are you using they're probably not giving you the complete picture so just keep that in mind now here's where things get even more interesting okay and this is very important to know so please pay attention I literally just spent hours going through all of this data and so I was curious to know what is the actual trade improvement with these three now that we know the three best sets what improvement do you actually get from your army over the six piece dragon's breath set right like let's say you already had the six piece dragon's breath set it's all iconics with all all the special talents and everything what's the actual trade improvement that you can expect if you replace that with one of these three sets and this is the part that is completely fear infuriates me and the answer is between probably like let's be generous and say two and a half to three and a half percent for these two sets here this improvement is very very minor there's so much randomness in in the testing i mean you have randomness on the skills you have randomness on the talents even with removing the accessories there's still so much randomness in testing stuff like this so in general you could improve maybe two and a half to three and a half percent in your trade by swapping to one of these different builds which not that much you guys not that much okay i also did the math for an improvement like let's say you already had the kvk pieces with the four piece dragon's breath set the improvement of changing that to one of these two would be between 1.7 and 2.7 percent somewhere in that range so yeah there's so much debate about what the actual best archer set is and at the end of the day what everyone is arguing about and what everyone is theory crafting about and testing is literally going to come down to maybe a two percent improvement three percent three and a half percent at best and that matters a lot when you're talking about like the end game like late game 1960 like if you are like the best players in the entire game then yes three and a half percent could be a, a huge advantage right but if you're a free to play player, if you are just a regular open field fighter, all this discussion, all this nuance, all these different things, like the, the trade off here is so actually minor in the grand scheme of things. Like if you already have a legendary set of gear, putting a ring and horn on it is going to be far more impactful than changing pieces to like some leadership and some KVK. Like this is a mega micro optimization for the late, 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 late game. So if anyone ever tells you that, oh, well you, you need to have two leadership pieces because it's so much better. It's like, no, it's actually slightly better. It is slightly better. It is technically best in slot, but we are literally talking about like a 2% improvement here. We are like well within the range of like RNG rounding errors. Okay. Like we are super splitting hairs at this point. And so the conclusion that I want to leave you with here is that if you already built a six piece dragon's breath set, yes, it is not the best in slot, but it's maybe 3% away okay three and a half percent if you already have the two kvk pieces and a four piece dragon's breath set you're about one and a half to two and a half percent away from best in slot so yes could you make an improvement yes there is an improvement to be made here but i'm not going to sit here and tell you that it will change your life okay it will not change your life this is a mega micro optimization and i want to make that very very clear so should you if you already have archer gear scrap some of it for 
the leadership pieces probably not okay unless you're like a giga kraken like unless you're baba okay that is not a trade-off that i would make more than likely what you would look to do is start to build out a second archer set and with this knowledge you would then say okay well i'm gonna build the glorious goddess legs and then you can decide do you want to go for the boots or do you want to go for the gloves technically speaking the gloves are the more balanced option and will probably give you the best trades in the on average okay but in some scenarios the boots will probably perform better because you are going to deal a little bit more damage and so in scenarios where you're not being hit as much you're going to outperform with the legs and boots for leadership so with all of that out of the way we can finally look at our end game set which is two leadership pieces, two KVK pieces, two dragon's breath pieces, and horn and ring. Everything with the talent, your maximum stats here are going to be 22.5% attack, 53.5% defense, and 25% health. That was a really long way to get there. Your second best option, which comes in nearly tied, okay, is the leadership legs and boots. Everything with the talent, this is what the stat breakdown would be. A very nice, clean 30, 30, 30 here, which is nice. 32.5% attack, 35.5% defense and 33% health. But this is very misleading because remember, you do have to take into account all the stats that you get from your buildings, alliance, holy sites, runes, civilization, item buffs, KVK tech, commanders, talents. So yeah, so this these numbers look really nice and even, and that looks great, but it's not the whole picture. Next, you might be thinking, okay, well, if I build something like uh, this for my single set of archer gear, what might it look like to build a second set of archer gear? and to that i say most likely it would probably be easiest and safest to just go for a six piece dragon's breath set and the reason for this is because you're going to need a lot of kvk blueprints to get the special talent on the helmet and the weapon and also to get iconic five on the helmet and the weapon so in a world where you might want to progress through the iconic system on both sets simultaneously then you might not want to have competing blueprints between your first archer set and your second archer set and in that world that leads you to the two dragon's breath pieces for the weapon and the helmet now it's also worth noting that if on your first archer set you did the two kvk pieces with the leadership legs and boots and the dragon's breath chest and gloves then your second set could look something like this where you actually would have no overlapping pieces at all you would still have a two-piece dragon's breath set you would have the basically the crystal key pieces here where you still actually get a lot of health from the milky way it's 12 percent health here and the ian's choice yeah ian's choice also gives you attack right so replacing the dragon's breath gloves with the ian's choice gloves it's a trade-off of attack for attack so it's like you're not really losing anything there this is a little bit more free to play friendly because you just can get these blueprints over time from opening crystal keys then your legs and boots will be dragon's breath because then they won't be competing for blueprints that you'll need for your first archer set because that's going to be the leadership stuff and oh my god i cannot believe how long this video has been okay now the last thing i want to cover here is iconic upgrades for your archer equipment which pieces should get priority in the iconic tier system and just like i mentioned in my infantry video of course the accessories typically should go first because this gives you universal base health points which means you can move these accessories from your archer set to your cavalry set later and you're still going to get base health from archers to calves and so typically accessories are at the top of the priority list beyond accessories i think the number one priority for iconic upgrades should be your dragon's breath boots or the glorious goddess boots which whichever ones you actually ended up crafting but either way the iconic tier four and five give you March speed specifically iconic tier four is universal March speed iconic tier five is March speed outside of Alliance territory for both of these pieces and archers are notoriously slow right now so number one priority is the boots after that would be the kvk pieces the hydra's blast and also the ancestral mask because every upgrade to these kvk pieces is going to provide you more value than non-kvk pieces now it does cost more materials to do them but each upgrade will make your army just slightly better than an upgrade in another slot just like with infantry the iconic tiers for the chest piece become much less useful after iconic tier three unless you're a mega well who does like to swarm down rallies and garrisons or or you are a rally garrison lead yourself in which case this is probably a, a really good investment but really the chest for most open field fighters doesn't have to go past iconic tier three so you can kind of put this on the back burner which means your legs and your gloves would be next after the kvk pieces anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it would really help out the channel a ton like i said i literally probably did like three hours worth of data collection or four hours worth of data collection for this video so it would really mean a lot if you dropped a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel while you're 
down there click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on the conclusions that we made in this video i'm sure lots of you have questions you have concerns you already built the leadership boots uh, do you need to switch to the leadership blood the answer is probably not okay hopefully you learned from the end portion of the video that the differences in these different sets is so minuscule that it's like if you've already made a choice you're fine just there's, there's probably better things to be working on so don't worry too much about it we're splitting hairs at this point guys with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace